Hey, as this channel continues to grow, I've been thinking of doing a uh, once a month kind of car cast style questionnaire. Um, I get a lot of comments, probably about 10 a day it seems like anymore. A lot of them are technical in nature, and I figure I'd answer a couple of them and talk about it real quick on here. Um, if you guys like this, just comment in this video, or if you don't like it, let me know and I'll stop making them. Um, just want to give you some updates on the channel too. Over 1,500 subscribers, that's awesome. I've actually started investing a little on this channel. Got a nice microphone now, opposed to just using the, the crappy headset one I was using before. And uh, let's uh, start with our first question, all right? All right, so Renee is a 3126 Cat diesel engine, uh, predecessor to the C7. And he's getting fuel, diesel fuel, in his coolant. So what typically causes that? Well, I only know of one of two things that causes that. And only it can only really be one of those two things on a 3126. So the place that coolant and fuel typically mix when you start getting fuel in your coolant is the injector cups. Inside the cylinder head, there are small steel, or on the older ones, like the 3116s, are kind of a brass bronze insert. But most of them, they're steel inserts on your C15s, your 3126s, C7, C9s, C13s. They're all steel. And the bottom portion is a press fit, and the top portion is sealed with O-rings, basically. It's on the C7s and C9s, they're press fit bottom. On the C13s and C15s, they have an O-ring seal on the bottom, and then all of them have O-ring seals on the top. And what they do is they keep your coolant close to the bottom portion of your injector to keep your injectors cool. Because remember, your injectors are sitting with the tip in the combustion portion of the cylinder, so they get pretty hot. And what happens is when they seals fail on the injector cups since the fuel pressure is typically higher you know we're talking 70 80 90 psi and your coolant pressure is lower than that it's typically you know 10 psi on average uh, you're going to get fuel in your coolant so the way to fix that is you need to pull all your injectors out you need to get new cups and new seals and then you're going to clean the injector bores out. You're going to install your new seals with, or new injector cups with new seals. Then you need to drain all your coolant. It's garbage since it has fuel contamination in it. And you're going to want to do a couple flushes. You can, dog's irritating me. You can, seriously? Come on there! What you can do is after you drain the coolant out, you can put pine saw or purple power degreaser, simple green, in with just normal tap water. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna run the engine for about 30 minutes with that just water and soap mix. And that should help really clear that system out. And then you're gonna drain that and it's best to drain it in two places, typically the radiator and the engine somewhere. Um, typically around the oil cooler on the exhaust side, there's a couple places. There might be a plug you can remove, and it'll drain the block and then drain the, the cooling system at the radiator too. And then what you're going to do is if you want to really flush it again, you can use the same you know, degreaser plus water mixture. Or if it seems pretty clean to you, you can just run straight water and I typically do two water flushes and then drain it completely again and then what you're gonna want to do is refill it with fresh coolant all right and of course that also means resealing your injectors running your overhead all right on to question two all right so question two is in relation to comments about getting a c15 overhead video up yes I'm planning on doing a c15 overhead I do know how to do C15. Yeah, I do know how to do C15 overheads. I've done a lot of them. However, I haven't done one in the last 
I don't know, probably six months I haven't done a C15 overhead. I've been getting a lot of electrical troubleshooting, um, electronics, leaks, overheat, stuff like that. If you've noticed, most of the videos over the last month or so have been mostly electrical and uh, check engine lights, stuff like that. That's because that's what I've been doing. And that's kind of one of the problems is I can really only do videos on what I'm working on. So since I haven't done an overhead in a little while, it, it, it's prevented me from doing a C15 overhead video. And a lot of people want to know how to set the injector height, how to adjust your jakes, your IVAs, all that. When I do the video, which hopefully, hopefully will be soon, um, I will get all that out there. I'll do the injector height, I'll do you know, IVAs, jakes, how to pin the engine, all that stuff. Um, I do have an overhead video out now on a C7, but that's really just the intake and exhaust valves. And um, the principles do apply, but it, if you're getting into a C15, that's kind of a whole other animal. Um, I do apologize it has taken so long, but I don't, I don't control the work that comes in. And I, doing the video, I wanna do a really good job, so I wanna make sure I'm actually doing an overhead on one so you guys can get a really clear view on what I'm doing. All right, on to the next question. All right, so question three is in relation to re-rates and when I did the, the re-rate and how to add a horsepower video I got a lot of questions on them um, maybe in the video I wasn't real clear but on an uprate cat does charge you so the charge is from cat typically on a truck engine to uprate your horsepower is $250 and they charge the shop that's doing the uprate the $250 so if you go to a shop and they uprate your engine for you, meaning you're going from whatever, 450 to 500 on a C15. CAT is going to charge that shop $250. So that shop is obviously going to charge you the $250, but it's typically gonna charge you more than that as well because it has to make money too. So some shops will charge you an hour's labor, two hours labor. I believe our shop charges just $500 because that's 250 to cover the cost and then just 250 for the labor now if you are down rating they don't charge you anything um, it's only for up rates so I would say if you're thinking of going on a D rate I don't know why you would I would tell you not to do it because if in the future you need to upgrade it even to the original horsepower that it was set at you're gonna have to pay the fee um, also, I've got a few questions on for re-rates RVs. Um, RVs typically have the highest horsepower rating available for an engine anyways. Um, say for a C7, you can get up to a 350 horsepower rating on some C7s if it's an RV. Now, if it's a C7 in a small truck or like a little dump truck, you're never, you'll never see that horsepower. Typically, those horsepower ratings are around the 200 horsepower. Now, some guys will have the 300 horsepower 860 torque, and they've asked me if they can go to 330, 860, or 350, 860. And yes, you can. You're going to have to pay the uprate fee. But I tell them not to get it. And the reason for that is RVs don't get that horsepower free. And what I mean by that is, yes, you have a much higher horsepower rating than most trucks. The reason CAT gives that to you is because they typically will derate you once you start using that power. And what I mean by that is if you ever look at an RV download, there's a lot of them are going to have codes for high exhaust temp derate. And what that is is you don't see that usually on truck engines or bus engines. What that is is since CAT has upgraded your engine basically higher than what it intends your engine to run at prime, which means under full load all the time. What it'll do is once it sees that you are, say, pulling a hill or you're under heavy load, 95% or 100% load for more than five minutes, it'll start derating you. So it'll start cutting your power back. And that's why even if you add the horsepower, um, you're not really going to be able to get full use out of that. And that seems... That seems specific mostly to RVs. And uh, that's kind of three questions I wanted to talk about in this episode. If, uh, if you guys like this video, 
Just let me know if you think it's retarded or whatever. Let me know too, and I'll, I'll stop making them. All right, thank you for watching the video.